Hello folks, today I'm going to teach you one simple flow hack. That's it. But this is going to change your workflow forever. I wish I had known this one when I first started building flows. Now, it is hard to describe in a couple of sentences, so you're going to have to see it in action. Stay until the end of the demo and you'll find out how you can modularize your flows and test them much more easily than before by applying this hack. So here I have a simple record triggered flow. What does this flow do? When an opportunity is created or updated and the stage equals proposal price quote, it's going to trigger. And this is an actions and related records and after save record triggered flow. And what it simply does is it's getting a task that may or may not exist so it's looking for proposal follow-up in the subject. The status needs to be completed. Well, it cannot be completed. Let me correct myself. And the related to ID is going to be the opportunity that actually triggered the flow. So if the task doesn't exist, it's going to create a task. And as you can guess, the subject of this new task is going to be proposal follow-up and we have a description for it it's going to be related to the opportunity record and due date is determined using a formula i think it's seven days plus seven let's look at that quickly due date formula is plus seven now especially when triggering on an update Checking whether you have already created this task is always a good idea. So if you've created the task, you don't want to create it again. If there is a task that's actually completed with the subject that's in question, then we will still create a task. So, you know, that makes sense for our use case. Now, let's say we build this record triggered flow, but this kind of follow-up actually comes up. The requirement is repeated to us from our internal or external clients. And we want to reuse the same logic, right? You know, what would you do? Some people would create this flow from the beginning. One more time, some people would try and reuse it. But how do you reuse this flow? It's a record triggered flow. Well, the answer is rather simple. And uh, I've known the answer for a very long time, but I realized in the ecosystem that this solution is not very well known. So what you want to be doing, actually, you have probably seen this menu op option here before. You can save your flow as a new flow. So what I do is I take this opportunity XPR proposal, the name of the flow, right? I'll copy the label and I'll say, you know what? I want to save this as a new flow. I will paste this one and this is going to be an auto launch flow. Let me call this one two because I have created the one without two already before. Uh, and under show advanced, I'm going to change the type of flow this is. I want to make this one an auto launch flow so that I can use it and I can call it from other flows. When I make it an auto launch flow, this can be a subflow for a screen flow, for another auto launch flow, record triggered flow. It can be a screen action for a screen flow. It can be an action button auto launch flow. I can do a lot of things with it. And I'm going to be able to debug this one separately as well. So I'm going to change this to auto launch flow and save it. Now, when I do that, you'll see that this is going to break my flow. I'll see a lot of errors here on the left side. It depends on how big my flow is. Usually, this hack may not make a lot of sense if your flow is small. You know, this is a rather small flow. There is some logic in it. But sometimes we end up building pages and pages long flows, right? You know, they fill multiple screens and you don't want to recreate everything. Now, the reason why this is failing, and please note that this flow has not saved yet, 
we will have to resolve the errors for it to save. It actually says in here. The reason why it's failing is it has dollar record references and it is telling me where they are. And if I use dollar record references here, those dollar record references will actually break my flow, right? So instead of the dollar record references, I'm gonna wanna use my own variables and that variable can be accepted as an input, right? So let's do that. So this was for opportunity. I'm going to use the opportunity record here. Let's create a variable that will accept values from the outside world. So record ID. And this is going to be a text variable. That's a single text available for input. Let's set up another variable. Let's call this one delay in days variable. This is going to determine how many days we are going to advance to due date for the task. Let's make this a number variable, no decimals. And this is available for input again. And let's create another one for owner user ID variable. So this is going to determine who's going to own the task. Let me correct this typo here. All right, so this is going to be again, a text input available for input checked. So now that I have created the variables I'm going to replace my record IDs with, I'm going to go in here and find the record ID references. So the related to is going to be the record ID. This variable is meant for the opportunity, but it can actually be any record that's not really meant for a person, right? You know, in the what ID, we can use, like for example, case, custom object records, this can be quite flexible now that we have made this one into an auto launch flow, potentially a subflow. So the other variables look good and I'm going to go to my create a task. I see the due date formula. So that's where the delay in days is going to go in. I will modify that on the left panel. And here is the owner ID. So that will change to owner ID user ID variable without the reference to record ID. And this is the record ID reference to the opportunity in our use case. And let me just go to my formula here and modify that. Due date formula is advancing right now by seven days. And I want to make that a variable. And that's going to add delay in days variable that will be passed into this subflow. So now I should be able to save this. Let's try. When I go to save it, it's going to try and save here. And I think it did already. No warnings, no errors, nothing. And then it saved. So this flow is now going to debug nicely. And I can test the functionality really well, decoupled from any record. Right, you know, I can actually use a record ID here, record ID reference. And with just that, I can determine the delay in days and the owner ID independently. To test this, let me just grab an opportunity ID here. That's what I would need. And then I would also need a user ID. Let me just click through Andy and then grab the user ID for that user and go back here, click debug, and delay in days should be seven. Owner user ID should be the owner I just copied, and this would be my opportunity ID. Rollback mode and run it. As you can see, the flow followed the path all along until the end over here and then created the task. Voila, guys. So now, 
what you can simply do is you can actually take this auto launch flow and call it from a record triggered flow, right? It's very simple. You can just add a start element to the record triggered flow, define the same start element conditions and call it from that record triggered flow. Now you can use and reuse this functionality from any flows that you build. You can add them to scheduled triggered flows. You can add them to your immediate paths or scheduled paths. The opportunities, the possibilities are limitless. So if you enjoyed this hack, go ahead and give me a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll see you on the next one.